to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The boys are back. Dim boys. Tuesday episode of the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers. Back with you for a waiver episode. We get to talk about big, big news that broke earlier this morning. We have talked to the league and we've always we've tried to get them to always schedule the the news to be, you know, just before we record, while we record. It was kind and, re- you know, we wanted to relate <clears throat> to the game last night. It yeah. was yeah. both awesome and awful at the same time. Like the game was? The game was just a, such a great back and forth game. That Between was, the, the refs. But the refs, man. I mean, I it, it was like the most awesome, good enough scoring, back and forth competitive game that I wanted to stop watching because – they stopped playing every 20 Don't seconds. Don't you watch, though, for the refs to see what the sweet calls are <laughs> yeah. from, like, the top refs and get your calls per game? I mean, we're... I live for those illegal formations, man. <laughs> I just... I love the new I, I mean, okay, I'll, I've said it so many times. Get that out of the game. It is the illegal formations that they... Uh, I saw. So I'm so happy the NFL's cracking down on this because those guys lining up illegally... I just don't know. Unbelievable. You're both ridiculous. You're, both You're ridiculous. ridiculous. You're Why? out of line. No, you guys are saying don't have a formation that's legal. I, I mean, I am no, no, listen, no. Listen, you, you just follow the rules and you no, won't get no, called. No, no. I am saying there should be no rules there behind the line of scrimmage. That's it. You can't line up past mm. where the ball is. You are both psychotic. You want to put if that's what you, you want. You want to put eight people to the right side of the line. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Go up. You want to not block the quarterback? What? What is the problem there's with a league, that? There's a league for you. It's called arena football. It's super popular. You it, should buy season tickets. Yeah, I mean, if that was the primary there's league, a mall, it'd be more there, fun. There's a mall somewhere where they're playing yeah, there where they're playing that <laughs> game right now. Um, Weiner, just follow the rules and you'll be fine. The league, the league goes through this all the time. How about you? How about you have a formation that's legal, and then we don't get a penalty? Ooh, big ref over here. What's yeah, this all about? This well, guy loves we, the stripes. We added two flags. The owners of the NFL have gone through enough, and so have the refs. <laughs> we added refs to our league. Think about them. Flags right, we per do. game. Yes, we, we, we added some refs. We we're going to need to. Uh, Josh Allen, two touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. 19, 19 for 25, 215. Aaron Rodgers threw for 294 and two, had a pick. Brees Hall, we said it. This was going to be the game. It was. And he, he was 18 for 113, got all the work. It was great. His his utilization in the, the running game, his snaps, his routes run, everything was what we as Brees Hall drafters have been hoping for. So it's nice to see that uh, coincide with the offensive play caller shift. I just saw some more news come in that we're going to get to talk about today. Ooh. It's kind of it's kind of impactful. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, we'll you know tease it along as we finish this game. Now, Ray Davis, Ray Davis. Holy crap! He did not get the start, Mike. Yeah, that's <laughs> he did you. not get the start. That's another thing. Ty Johnson got the the what, start. R e s p e c t. What is that all about? If you're Ty Johnson, and you go, you're like, brother, you're starting. You get out there and rips off a huge run, and they're like, "All right, you're going to need to sit down for the rest of the game." Why? Yeah. Why? Just put put well, no, Davis d- in. Don't you think he feels that respect? <laughs> don't you think it's like, "Wow, it's just, I'm so glad I got that veteran start." S- sits. He's on the sideline in full superhero pose. It's like, I did it. I it's did a, it. I started. It's almost the opposite of what they're trying to do. They're yes. trying to show him that veteran respect, but there's no way you go out and tell someone you're starting. You get that first snap. And then you're not upsetting them the rest be, of the game. To while they be sit. fair, this was not necessarily the game plan. When Ray Davis got in the game, he started chunking off run after run after run. It was easy to go hot hand at that fair. point, and he but was. But the chunk- hot hand started with the first carry. I don't think it did. Yeah, Ty, no. Dave, Ty Ty Johnson. I don't think got the carry. The second carry or the second play of the game, he got a carry, and it was Ray Davis on the second play that he was the first chunk play from my recollection. Ty Johnson, I don't think got the ball in the first play. 
Did he? He, he got he got a carry. Let me. I'll go. I'll I, go find I don't. I I believe that the first carry of the game was Ray Davis. Let me go find. It was it. the first snap that went to Ty Johnson. Anyway, Ray Davis caught three passes for. He had. He was twenty for ninety-seven. Uh, yeah. Ty John, the very first. So Greg Zerline kicks off sixty-five yards. Oh, touchback. Boy. Oh, Ty boy. Johnson, right end, twelve yards. That's a chunk. That's oh, the first okay. down. I remember that now. He yeah. went around the right edge. I know. And then they're just like, okay. That, 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 the only problem, if if you want to go Ray Davis, do it. Don't do this bull crap where you're like, well, Ty Johnson's you two, a better. That, you two need to take <laughs> like some sort of sedative. We're on fire. No, this is not fire. This is anger. You came back from whatever trips you're on with like no, I'm with the super new perspective. Pent up, right. pent up rage. Well, let's let's just Speaking get... of rage, let's turn oh, it over. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's turn it over to Al Borland who you know, you guys hear these stories from time to time. Last year's major I, story. I'm here for that. I haven't got to, yeah. to weigh in yet. Evil Josh at it again. Josh did nothing. No, I agree. I agree. It was the Falcon. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Josh is responsible for his own team. Yeah. He improved his team. No, it, actually, he did but yeah. I don't know what happened to you this weekend, Mike. Um, All right, let, lay it out, and we'll let the, the people decide. Last night, we, we talked about it on the show. Al Borland just needed James Cook. And the Jets D to score fewer than like 12 points to win his matchup. Yep. And then James Cook ruled out. Awesome. And, yeah, and so his opponent didn't have any backups. He just had he, – He had Curtis Samuel and Matt Collins. But he had Curtis Samuel in his lineup. I know that because yep. that was the pivot. He it put, doesn't matter which one he had in his lineup. Oh, it was – oh, really? Yep. It would have – oh, Matt Collins scored, but it wouldn't have mattered? Correct. Because the Jets D did so bad. So what happened? They, they combined for like 10 points. Or oh, something no. Like so that. this oh. did change it? I yeah. didn't think oh, it, it changed it. it absolutely changed it. So what happened is uh, <laughs> James Cook gets ruled out. I tell my co-manager. Yeah, you were celebrating Dude, we here? have a prayer for in this game. About 20 minutes later, I see a trade go through where uh, Josh traded my opponent, Ray Davis, for a 6-7 swap. Yeah. yeah. Josh's divisional. Which? Uh, that must have been your opponent's idea. So here's the deal. <laughs> I would have had so much respect if my opponent had the foresight to say, I need to go get Ray Davis. I would have had a little bit of respect for Josh if he thought, hey, I could improve my team by trading Ray Davis. But instead, his 12-year-old fantasy, men <laughs> <laughs> fantasy mentor over here came up with the idea, Josh's new co-manager this year, and uh, they cost me a win. So hold on. Just, just so I can clarify, you're mad – at the Falcon, because the Falcon... Who oh, I, I have respect for the Falcon. I'm mad at oh. the other two. Wait, whose team is... Matt, whose team are you on? Josh. He's on Josh's. Okay, so you were on the part of the team that improved your drafts for next year? Yeah. Where is the problem? So here's, here's, here's the problem. Let me lay it out. The biggest problem I have is that they didn't start a bidding war and come to me and say, hey, we're going to dish off Ray Davis, goes to the highest bidder, and give me a chance to buy the win. That's, That's okay. That, that would have been you, even smarter. You can be upset about that. Why didn't you go to Josh and say, "Oh crap! I see you have Ray Davis. You want to give him to me so I can block the uh, the uh, the other guy from getting him?" Ooh. Fair enough. Counter <laughs> counter is <laughs> in there now. The, to make I, it look, a, I agree, I would be big mad, but that's just because to I, make it a little spicier. <laughs> Jeremy is a divisional <laughs> opponent of Papa Josh's, so Papa Josh is improving his team twice in theory next year's draft capital and hurting his divisional opponent however you could argue he made a very bad trade because he didn't improve well, much now, and he got rid of ray davis yeah. who was awesome now it looks bad anyways back to the game ray davis was awesome yeah he, he was, had he had a great game he was great dalton kincaid six for 51 it was fine they he, can't connect on any big plays down the field that's been the problem all year long he's been open many times down the field somehow that connection is missed I would probably just hang in there. I, I would hang in there, but I will say this. I, I went back and I rewatched all of Kincaid's routes um, after the game, and I'm just not sure he's that dude. You know what I mean? Like, we, you know, we wanted Trey, we, we've seen Trey McBride just kind of take over from time to time, dominate, grab very difficult catches, break difficult tackles. We have not seen, they need Dalton Kincaid. They need a wide receiver or a receiving option to kind of, really help this machine move and it's not been Kincaid it's been an amalgamation of all options he so. had double the receptions of every other player on the team yep. yesterday right but 51 yards I mean he, he most of what he is getting is like screen work behind the line of scrimmage like it, you said they're true. not connecting yeah, no, down the field 51 yards on six receptions like that is that's pedestrian tight end stuff that's a and the like touchdown, Tyler Conklin can do that touchdown went to Dawson Knox yeah 
We had Garrett Wilson, 8 for 107 and a touchdown on 10 targets. Alan Lazard caught the Hail Mary, 6 for 114 and a touchdown. And the Jets and Bills kickers was, had a tough night. Yes, they did. What was Mike Williams' line? Zero for zero with a concussion. Ah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. He was he was not good. He had a couple targets uh, where he was out of sync. Fell down on the end of the uh, at the end of the game, which uh, caused the interception. Uh, cost him his job and cost him his job. Because... Speaking of which, news and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, 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 the Raiders have traded away Devontae Adams to the panicking New York Jets. Um, the Jets are taking 100% of his contract. I can't believe that. Part. The Raiders get a conditional third rounder that can become a second rounder based on performance, and Devontae's hamstring seems like it has vastly improved. <laughs> he was already in New York this morning. He's in the building. <laughs> And um, Mike said, "Did he teleport?" <laughs> I think he was. Uh, he was there to show off his fresh hamstring. But uh, let's watched, talk about it all. He watched Mike Williams fall down. He watched Aaron Rodgers say, uh, basically, uh, uh, he called out Mike Williams for running the wrong route. Um, and it's never been Aaron Rodgers' fault. And then Devonte Adams boarded a plane and said, "All right, <laughs> I know what's about to happen." Goes to New York. This is. I think this is a great genuinely a great move by the Jets. I really, really do. When you watch this offense, you've got Garrett Wilson chugging along. Alan Lazard is, being Alan Lazard is... Lazard's, like, he's a good role player. Yes, he is, but he's not necessarily, like, the two at this stage of his career. This changes the offense. I think this improves the Jets' chances. I mean, they're two and four. They're staring at, you know, a, a tough road to make the playoffs, but they've got a good defense when they get their corners back. They should have a good offense with these weapons. I think this is great for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, um, they should have had a good offense without Devontae Adams. When you have a top running back and, you know, Garrett Wilson and Lazard and Mike Williams, that's the that's the counter argument is that, you know, how many pieces do you have to add before your competency goes up? They're three they were three and three with Zach Wilson scored 113 points through the first six weeks last year. They're two and four with Aaron Rodgers. They've scored 113 points this year. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't make them better at all. I'm just saying that this might not be the salve that the, the Jets keep throwing, you know, players at the problem, and maybe the players are the problem. I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, that I've been kind of anti Aaron Rodgers for a year and a half, saying I don't think he is the same MVP caliber player, and I, and I, you know, I, I still believe that. But watching the game, it really did feel like outside of. Wilson and Lazard, he didn't have an option to go to, and it, it it felt a couple of drives where it was like when he targeted Mike Williams, they were out of sync. Mike Williams couldn't come down with it. And if you're telling me you go from, you know, you go from Mike Williams being the three to Lazard being the three, Garrett Wilson the two, and Devonte Adams the one, I, I really do think they'll move the ball. There are a lot of people that don't believe this move impacts Garrett Wilson to the negative. I don't understand that perspective. Like Garrett Wilson has lived on volume even last night. You know, you're talking about what eight for 107. Wait, are you talking about the guy who, by a wide margin, leads the league in targets so far this year? Yeah, yeah, that it, he he can't do that anymore. And so, I, I I put a tweet out saying that this is you know this is uh it's good for the Jets, good for Rogers. I think it's good for Brees Hall, and it's it's not good for Garrett Wilson. And then Mike Williams is dead. But um, but how bad? But that's, that's the thing. That's the question. Everyone came saying I was like saying Garrett Wilson's dead. No, he's not dead. He's going to be the wide receiver too. He's going to be okay. But the the fact that this guy has been nothing but a target leader. I mean, he's literally in in, in the amount of games he's played, he has more targets than anyone who's done that in NFL history. That's gone. And being the target leader, um, you know, twenty two in week five, ten this week. That's a million. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. That's like a 300 target pace over yeah, those two the, weeks. The 22 is the but, outlier. But, but he was I, on pace for 187 targets in the offense, and that will change. And he will be a very valuable player. The question will be more like, you know, this is more like Waddle and Devontae Smith category than it was the ability to be a top five, top six guy in the offense. He certainly won't be the red zone target anymore. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, big the one. main thing for me is it's like you're going to dice people up in the slot between the 20s 
But Garrett Wilson not getting it in the end zone, do you get a lot of six for 61, no touchdown? You know, those type of games I think are more in the range of outcomes, and we're not talking about a player that has been a tried and true, reliable, every week dominator. This is somebody that's finished as the wide receiver 19 and 32 when he's had the role to himself. To me, it's just a change of expectations. He's now a solid wide receiver too. That's yeah, what that, I, which is great. Yeah, that's a very important asset in fantasy football. But you hoped, you know, what you saw the last two weeks was a top five wide receiver. Which is but why you saw I said 32 targets. I wanted to trade him after the 22 target week. Yeah. That was the advice because of the fact that this trade was very probable. So I he's still, still going to be a starter. I still think he's a top 20 guy. Yeah. Like Garrett Wilson. Yeah, like, that's, I, the, that's, the, that's fine. And it's, I mean, like 10 targets. It's just, what is this offense? What does this offense look like? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of Devontae Adams. Well, I'm, I'm saying there, it was the, oh, we're going to, are we going to get back to the, the Jets defense and like running? Sounded like Sly Stallone for a second. Uh, we're going to run you're the doing, ball. You're Adrian. <laughs> but it's like, or does this, or are we now high flying New York Jets? I mean, there would be a misuse of, of, assets and draft picks to bring Adams in and not be throwing the ball a ton. So I just I think I guess I feel like we're all saying the same thing. I'm yeah, just a are. little it's I'm just, a little more of the optimistic side of I think a, that like looking at it, the Adams will be the one. I'm not going to argue against that, but I think Wilson will be a really strong uh Kobe Myers had games in Los in Las Vegas all the time for the Raiders. So let's talk about Devontae Adams cuz if we're saying okay, we think Garrett Wilson is the two. And we think he's a top twenty wide receiver, which is not what you wanted, you know, in that in that fifteen to twenty range or fourteen somewhere around there. Then what is Devontae Adams reunited here with Aaron Rodgers as the red zone threat? Top wide 12. receiver ten to twelve. He's a top twelve guy now. Okay. Yeah. Is he what on on film to me, Adams was he was still a great player. Yes. He just he was dealing with the, uh, the hamstring. Well, I'm saying <laughs> no, I know like, like Minshew this year, which it was it was okay. And then last year was, you know, a ton of Jimmy Garoppolo and Dan O'Connell was just guys who couldn't get him the ball. So it, I think he's a top 12 guy. To, where is Rodgers on your radar? Because Rodgers has not been talked about of like, oh, I'm going to pick up Aaron Rodgers and play him. Well, he's had, like, Rodgers I thought looked quite good. He's, like, he's looked, he, Rodgers to me this year has looked really good two times. And, but the, but now you have Adams on here. Does that jump up to now he's good in 75% of his games? Yeah, I, th I think I think he's still a streaming option because he's a pocket passer. And so, you know, you look at like this coming schedule at Pittsburgh, I'm probably not going to stream him. Uh, for, first week back from Adams and get, getting involved. Um, later on, you know, a couple weeks from now when he's got Arizona and Indy, absolutely, he'll, Dude, he'll be in the lineup. The schedule. So it's pit, on the road against Pittsburgh and the Patriots the next two weeks. Those aren't plus – but then Houston, Arizona, the Colts, Seattle, Miami, Jacksonville, Rams, Buffalo. Like it's a good This stretch. could be a really really good run for them after these couple weeks. Which is probably what catalyzed the the willingness to trade, you know, a lot of assets and take on the money. Uh, let me be clear though, Devontae Adams has not been we don't know if he's playing this week. He, he's coming right. off the yeah, hamstring. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, acclimating to the roster and to the playbook. So, we do not know that yet. Um, but we got, you know, it's exciting. It's fun. It's fun to see happen. I mean, Brock Bowers yeah, is the man dude, now. Dude, that's the name I wanted to bring up. I wasn't going to let you move on before talking about Brock Bowers, who is going to be unbelievable. In the two games without Devontae Adams, he had double-digit targets each week. People are like, well, so is Jacoby Myers the one? Is it Trey? No, Brock Bowers is the number one target rest of season for the Raiders. This is a rare situation. I mean, you've got Travis Kelsey in the past who's been the number one target for his team and like it is rare for a tight end to be their actual true number one target and rookie sensation Brock Bowers is going to be it which we just talked yesterday before this move about the fact that like if I had my money on somebody to be the number one tight end end of year it would be Bowers already yeah I think it's Bowers sure. and um for those that took the shot on him late and he was in that finalist. Oh, I wish I, yeah. I wish I had pulled the trigger yeah, on him. All got our druthers <laughs> on the uh, on the my guy. Um, <laughs> we will take a quick break. Come back with some other big news.
Oh man, uh, this is this is another big piece of news. The the Steelers are going to give Russell Wilson first team reps in practice this week. They're going to put him in line to start, make his season debut. Despite the fact Pittsburgh is four and two with Justin Fields, you're going to get Russell Wilson Sunday night football against the Jets and maybe Devontae Adams. What are we? Wait, is this is this like confirmed that they are planning to start yes. him? Yes, it's confirmed. So it's, uh, not start. Yes, not just first team reps in practice, but like they're doing that so that this week he's snapping the football and throwing what you, it what, you, what is it i'm just i hadn't i hadn't yes, heard the this news was that, brand new but i mean it says that he's gonna make his debut and start sunday night wow. what where who's got the report with that verbiage and we have a quote from mike tomlin that says sometimes it's not about what justin has done or has not done yeah tom pelissaro reporting well, it's he's saying steelers plan to give russell wilson first putting team him reps, in line to putting make, him in line yeah but, but i'm saying that that's he's gonna get his shot He's going to get a shot to start on Sunday night. That's the report. That would, you, is, would you do this? If I were them? Yeah. Yeah, you need more ceiling. Hmm. I would not do this. They did score 32 points in a dominating victory last week with Justin Fields rushing for two touchdowns. Yeah, it's fair counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's all, you know, it, it's where you want to go. Where do you want to go as a team? You think you think the Steelers or Justin Fields are getting through the, the AFC playoffs? No. No, I don't. No, and and I don't think they will with Russell Wilson either. But no. you have hopes of former Russell Wilson, like if if he comes back to form of you know he was a what I thought was a Hall of Fame caliber player, but it was then, long ago and yeah, a galaxy was, far far, that far was away. Years ago, yeah, it was a long time. I mean, this uh, is George Pickens is great for Pickens. You have a pocket passer back there that can get you the get you the ball a little bit more consistently. Friar Muth. Wilson was gonna here. Here's why this is happening too. This is the. Um, you're not losing your job due to injury. They had declared Russell Wilson as their starter. He was injured. He did not get an opportunity to start. And let's be honest. I mean, this team's predominant superpower is the defensive side of the football. I, th I think they're just wanting to give Russell Wilson, Wilson an opportunity to see where this team can go. But four and two, I mean, it's going to be criticized. That quote is outrageous. I'm so disappointed neither of you replied to it. it it's sometimes oh. it's not about what no, Justin has I, done or not done. I was trying to... I got sidetracked trying to track down the the actual talk about starting, but that that quote is is ludicrous. Like that's, hey, four and two starting quarterback. Sometimes it's not about I what you've done yeah, or not done. Like, I think what am I supposed to do? I it, it is of course what you've done and not done in the sense that like Brock Bowers when he or uh, Brock Purdy when he was given the chance, it was about what he did. It was like, well, dude, he's pretty good back there, and we're winning games with him. I don't think. You can't look at the four and two record and say the reason they're winning those games is Justin Fields. This he's had some good moments. He has d obviously brought them to the every single one of those victories, but it's their defense that Dude, is really. What the is reason. Mike Tomlin doing now? We're now we're saying a quote from Mike Tomlin. Kyle, this is a quote, a direct quote. Okay, <laughs> Mike Tomlin just now quote. Stats are often for losers. <laughs> Comfort food when you're taking an L. Yes, Tomlin. <laughs> yeah, I love this dude. I love Tomlin so much. He's the only what? coach. He's like the only coach out there that could say stats are for losers. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just I, Tomlin. Tomlin is well. What? I, he's above it. So they won the first. Just to look at the schedule, if you want to be more critical of it, we can talk about the fantasy implications. But they beat Atlanta 18 to 10 in Week One. Then they beat Denver 13-6. to That was Bo Nix. Then they beat the Chargers without Justin Herbert. Mm -hmm. Then they lost to Indy. They lost to Dallas. And then they beat a hapless Raiders team, 32-13. to um, That was a great win. But, you know, uh, to, to Jason's point, I don't know how much of Justin Fields is I'm winning you the ballgame or I'm keeping you in the ballgame, and they want to. Hey, we'll find out. New quote from Tomlin. About whether Steelers had interest in Devontae Adams. This is real. I'm not. This is not a joke. Quote: It doesn't matter. <laughs> I just love it, man. That one. I'm, that one's fine. Yeah, Come but he's just. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, at this there's point. no Tomlin coaching tree. <laughs> Do you realize that huh. for all the years that he's coached, there's you got the Reed tree and the Shanahan tree and the you know the Belichick tree and the, the you know these coaches that these long. There's no. There's no. I Tom, am the system. There is no Tomlin tree. It's me. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a completely different – like, if, if you look at it, I look at Tomlin and Dan Campbell in the same thing. That's the, the kind of – they're not schematic geniuses. They're leaders of men. 
Like Dan Campbell, you you don't look at him and go, oh, you know, the play calling of Dan Campbell. I mean, if you know him for anything, it's like, yeah, go for it on fourth down. I mean, yeah. Ben Johnson will be a head coach at some point, so he'll have a chance at a tree. I don't know if Tomlin's had people that tried and failed, um, but uh, well, it doesn't matter. He said, yeah, to, yeah. to that question. So look, it, it in my opinion, it's much better for George Pickens, who's been an inconsistent disaster. Um. Does it move the needle for Fryermuth to you to put him in in a starting category, in in a spot start category? More still. of a keeping eyes on. Yeah, it. I mean, and we've been we've been trying to get the Muth Luth for years now. I That's want, fine. Yeah, I want the other Wilson there. I want Roman Wilson to come in with Russell. Oh my gosh, go they Wilson. Need a, they need another they player. They do need another wide it. receiver. If you're trying to get Devontae Adams, and you've drafted Roman Wilson and you you aren't using him, Van Jefferson's not the answer either. Uh, Anthony Richardson will play in week seven against the Dolphins if he doesn't suffer any more setbacks, which the team is hoping he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. It's it's funny because you e, e, you got any gum? E. I mean, look, look at, e. talk to people in Indianapolis. Listen to them talk. They don't know what to do. They really don't because you know the answer. The truth is this. This is like a, it's a now and later, okay? Yeah. Do you want to win today? Do you want to win tomorrow? That is the actual decision. You win tomorrow more often if you give Anthony Richardson an opportunity to get experience. We talked about this in the offseason. He was one of the least experienced quarterbacks that we've ever seen drafted where he was drafted and given the opportunity. He came in with almost no – I mean, comparing him to Jaden Daniels in, in collegiate experience and snaps – it, they're incomparable. He barely threw pass attempts since high school. And so he needs snaps. To back up your point there. But the they'll only, win with Flacco. The only other quarterback I could think of with as little actual football playing experience uh, was your boy Trey. Hey, hey, my fantasy. I liked him for fantasy. I mean, uh, you were you were winning ball games, And look, your defense sucks. So Richardson right now, Jason, we were looking at it yesterday, right? His big performing games, two of them, really one and a half, they came on the back of hitting a big play down the field, and that's going to pile up the points. But sustained drives, consistency from your wide receivers, that's been Joe Flacco's name and his game, and he's averaging 300-plus yards, and he's playing Miami. Joe Flacco should be able to beat Miami without Tua. Yeah, if you're the Dolphins. You could lose. If you're the Dolphins, you're you're hoping that Anthony Richardson plays. And that tells you, you know, that, 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 tell, that tells you who you – Maybe should be starting yeah. if your goal is to win now. But I, I, I hear it. And so if Anthony Richardson is back, I do think against the Dolphins, you should start Anthony Richardson. He's obviously in a, in a handful of games. He's had massive upside. And you don't think that the Dolphins are going to get out to a, a, a gargantuan lead here without Tua. So I'm, I'm willing to start Richardson. But the problem is if he starts, I don't know that I start Josh Downs or Michael Pittman. It's like they vanish for me. I tend to agree. I, it's a trust factor right now. If Richards, Ultimate trust in Flacco. If Richardson does play this week, does Michael Pittman go to the IR? <laughs> I know. So you weren't here, but I made the joke. I made this the was joke verbatim. Oh, was Jason, yeah. Jason said this yesterday. Yesterday. It was like, he said because he figured like, it out. Because he was like talking about how he's like, yeah. my back is feeling better, everybody. <laughs> I'm oh. either going to miss a month or I'm good to play. Uh, let's just find out who the quarterback is. <laughs> Which is outrageous to even say yeah. IR is not out of the question, but as long as I'm feeling good, I'm going to run routes or something. I will so. say this. If Anthony Richardson plays and Pittman goes on IR, we called yeah. it Mike. <laughs> Insane. Oh, man. Insane. Uh, Matthew Stafford not going to miss time, but he's been dealing with back soreness, which freaks you out if you're a uh, – and yes. if you're trusting any offensive players in Los Angeles. Because if, if Stafford goes – Bye bye at any point. Ouch. For yeah. Cooper Cup and Puka and even Kyron. Yeah, I, w I would agree with that. It, without Stafford, Kyron is not going to be good. Cooper Cup could return this week. He uh, had a positive workout on Monday, according to Ian Rappaport. So he's been out since week two with the high ankle sprain. I expect uh, we'll know before the week if he's going to play. And, you know, I, I imagine he's straight into your lineup if he's out there. All right, man, we've got a lot to talk about today. Puka Nakua will not practice. Jordan Mason was practicing in a non-contact jersey dealing with the AC joint sprain. It's a waiver show, by the way. Yeah. Today's a waiver show. Um, 
which I, I hope to get to at some point. Ricky Pearsall designated a return. Jonathan Brooks, the 21-day window is open for Jonathan Brooks to come back, so he will be joining a backfield with Chuba Hubbard and the ghost of Miles Sanders. Um, Dontavian Wicks, week to week, goodbye. Saints are beat up. Mm -hmm. um, Taysom Hill limited with the rib injury. Olave didn't practice. This is Thursday night game. Olave, I would bet everything on him not playing. For sure. Oh, and then Rashid yeah. Shahid, the knee injury, um, they're trying to figure out the severity. He could miss time. Even if he doesn't, he shouldn't be in your lineup right now without Derek Carr, who they also don't have. So this is Thursday night football. This is Denver, right? Is that the matchup? Denver and New confirm. Orleans. Can we get a that confirmation? Is, I'm yes. looking around. That is yes. correct. Um, that's, that could be one boring Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, so or it could be great. You've got Alvin. Why is it going to be great? I'm just trying. I'm just putting it into the universe. Oh, man. okay. Uh, a, it's called the secret. Alv, Alvin Kamara. I mean, as a receiving option, is there any receiver that you can potentially put out there on that well, side? Well, Bub means Bub we means? can we can talk about Bub. Yeah, Bub means business. Hey, Bub. Uh, but. The the Denver, I mean, I don't think you can. I mean, right now, so far on the course of the season for wide receivers, Denver is the number one ranked. Sertan as, might be out too, though. It, I would expect him back. I thought he wasn't he a concussion. Yeah, he was, but he missed a game, didn't he? No, 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 no. He just no, he, that he just, just got concussed. On oh, Sunday. that was this week. Did you get a concussion? Sometimes <laughs> they they <laughs> then, lost then Sertan Thursday, and then, then they gave up twenty consecutive points. Yeah, on uh, so on a short week. If if that was this week, I thought he missed a week. Um, nope. Yeah, then he probably won't be there. Which is, I, I still don't know that I'm going to start Bub Means. No. Over under of uh, 37 in that game. It would be pretty desperate. All right, let's get into the waivers. Welcome to the waiver wire, presented by Amazon Business. We get our Chiefs, Rams, Dolphins, and Vikings back this week. So Kyron and Kelsey and Ty Clyde Edwards-Alaire and, and Tyreek. <laughs> yeah, the big guys. You were trying to stay on alliteration there. Uh, Sam Darnold and the Vikings coming back as well. And here we go. We the Cowboys and Bears go on by this week. So That's good. We need the Cowboys to uh, yeah. figure it out. We really, we really do. It's been uh, – it, there's got to be something about you do the holdout for the money and then you pay them both and then you're three and I mean three and three is not the end of the world. It's the way they're three and three. They have looked bad and very easily beatable and not good. <laughs> Wait, so they they look bad and not good? That's right. Both of those on different games. Where are you with the running back waiver options this week, gentlemen? Because we saw Ray Davis's performance last night. They played Tennessee, a good defense this upcoming week, and James Cook. It went down to the wire on his activity. I think we all imagine that James Cook is back. He is the engine that makes this team go. And and so how do you really invest in Ray Davis at that point? I, I think this week is a shotgun approach of cheap bids at running back where you're spraying a bunch of shots. You don't want to waste your favor or your 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 waiver fab. Um because Tyrone Tracy could be great. Yeah. But that's if Devin Singletary's gone. He if Devin Singletary's back, Tra Tracy becomes the backup again. Same with Ray Davis. Same with uh, Isaac Garindo. I mean, if, you know, Christian McCaffrey's not back yet, <clears throat> if Jordan Mason is out, Isaac Garendo is the waiver wire pickup of the week. Ty Chandler. Well, may, I would say maybe because, look, Patrick Taylor also played a ton and was running more routes than Garendo. Maybe that changes, uh, but, like, the, that, the, the San Francisco, I would go Garendo over Taylor, but I don't think that it is a first certain that, that, that Garendo's playing way ahead of Patrick Taylor. There are – and Sean Tucker had the big game. And if you're looking at, like, longer-term opportunities, there are two players oh. that are rostered in 40% and 61% of leagues to me. Tyler Algier is a fundamental part of the offense in Atlanta who has run well. 18 for 105 and 1. He's 40% rostered, and he is somebody that – as opposed to a spot start hope of like those other guys, Ray Davis and Tyrone Tracy and company, Algier will be flexible, I think, rest of the season. And then Alexander Madison, who, you know, 
continually performs against all odds. Yeah, I would I would put <laughs> Madison well above Algier. Algier had an obviously awesome game this last week where he had like 18 opportunities, but the previous month before that, he was averaging nine total opportunities a game. He, he's used around the goal line. You could, you could put him in a flex, but Madison is their primary back. Um, even before the Zamir White injury, they basically said, okay, that's not working. We're going to give Madison more work. Madison has somehow shockingly been able to find the end zone many many weeks and sometimes multiple times so um but he's not a good player no though. he's not a good player he's uh, 14 for 33 in this game not a good player um that you won't you won't that's see a the rebuttal. hard part is they're, they're not a good offense they're losing ball games and the falcons are a very good offense but your opportunities are going to be down and i think both of them are probably more touchdown dependent than we care to admit it, yeah it, maybe the receptions you, though like if 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 they really if they're going to be losing and Madison is just is going to keep seeing three or more targets every week. That's very valuable. So let's talk about Jalen Warren. Uh, Jalen Warren came sure. back from injury, didn't get a ton of work, but he's he is their primary pass catching back. If Russell Wilson comes in to start, you know that that's usually better for yeah. the pass yes, catching back. The Jets specifically usually do give up a lot of targets. That's the matchup this week. Two running backs is Warren someone that you could start without an injury ahead of him no I feel like no I'm not interested this you, is you'd rather start Algier this week than Warren yeah Warren Warren has to do it on the field this season before I have any confidence there this this is trending towards a, it's not your year type of season for Jalen Warren um and you're coming off a week in which giving the rock to Najee Harris a million times scored you 30 plus points so there's no way I'm putting Warren in there against the Jets, not knowing how much opportunity he'll actually even receive. He has not gotten a lot. So the waiver wire for running back this week really feels like we are trying to call our shot of which starting running backs are least likely to play, right? Between uh, between Cook and Singletary, Jordan Mason, Aaron Jones. Well, yeah, Jones. I, I get what you're saying. I think I – think Tyron Tracy stands alone for me. He does for me too. Because his his viability is, you know, potentially much longer term. They could turn to him. I mm -hmm. agree. His I, passing game prowess, his his explosiveness, and the team's lack of weapons, they could just turn to the rookie there. Whereas the other guys are very much dependent on injury. Tracy could he could start this week because Singletary's out. He could perform again, and then he could just be the guy. Yeah, I I think Tracy can take the job. Ray Davis, despite looking awesome, he's not taking James Cook job. I, I mean, if anything, it could hose James Cook of like that workhorse we were getting with him before. Maybe Ray Davis is on the field a bit more now. Um, and I, I would, I think that there is still a chance for Jalen Warren to take over for Najee. It like he's he's just coming off off back off of his injury. So it's a it's a much longer shot. Would much prefer uh, Tracy for that situation. But uh, I mean, I mean look, he, look, he look, only played. He, he was coming off an injury in in camp too. Yes, yeah, that's what so like he, he is. He's we've never not seen been it. healthy we've this never, year. He's, he's I'm yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. But it's the if any of of, of the all the guys we're talking about, if anyone can get more play time and be more important to the offense. I it, Tracy and Warren are the guys who are at the top. For yeah, me. there's a ton of names here at running back. There's no clear cut. You got to go and and dump your fab on this player. But there's a ton of names. More news is going to come out today. We will obviously right up until waiver wires go tomorrow. We'll be adjusting our waiver wire rankings, which are available on the website. If you are you know a member at Join the Foot, use the waiver wire tool. It'll show which one of these which of these players are available in your specific league, um, so that you can kind of have a little bit easier shot you know it'll show how much fab we would be willing to spend things like that so a really helpful tool the ultimate dashboard yes sir so you load all your teams up and you'll get a custom rankings for each league so you can just bounce through each team and see which of our guys and which rankings are available to me i would invest in tyron tracy that would be the fab spin i i think he's x he's outside all the other myriad of names we know that Aaron Jones has been working off to the side. You know, when you talk about Ty Chandler, we know that Jordan Mason's working off to the side when you talk about Garendo. And we don't know Rashad White's status right now. Sean Tucker has to play Baltimore with Bucky Irving. 
Yeah, that man, one, what a week for Sean Tucker. That one, yeah, also, Tampa Bay, we were telling you all last year, get Sean Tucker on the field because the dude can play. You know, he's this was he was number one. He was on the, the number one running back on the week. And it was basically just like garbage or not garbage, but you like it, it, would, it was really it was Bucky Irving for the majority of the game. And then Sean Tucker just has himself a, a, a good ending to the game. I believe Sean Tucker had one carry in the first quarter, which I was surprised with that he got involved that early. It wasn't much, but his touchdown reception, I believe, came in the second quarter. But the majority of his rushing work was after four minutes right. left in the game when it was when it was pretty much garbage. Todd Bowles came out and said that uh, he's played well enough to make it a three-headed monster in Yo, Tampa, yeah. which I believe. I believe, and that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Bucky just, Irving uh, situation. Yeah, it just... If you want to toss some people onto your bench, here are some names to think about. Um, in terms of stashes, Marshawn Lloyd eligible mm -hmm. to return soon. You could throw Kendra Miller there if Kamara gets hurt. And you've got Jalen Wright, who's looked very good, and he's a rookie. And you know they drop like flies in the backfield in Miami. Like you could have a week where Mostert, and it's like a non-zero chance Mostert and A Chan go out in the same week, and right. Jalen Wright would be really good. Yeah, that I, I would agree with that. And if, if you, you don't need someone now, if you need someone now, and you are in a deep league and you have no options whatsoever. I would look at Pierre Strong Jr. and Patrick Taylor Jr., the juniors, um, because those are those are players where you've got Nick Chubb coming back. I mean, it, it, also look for Nick Chubb. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's going to be would, leagues it, out there that don't have IRs that Nick Chubb's floating out there. He would be the priority He ad. would be my number one ad if somehow he was just but, out there. But, but, you know, presumably he is, he is rostered, but they might ease him back in with uh, Pierre Strong Jr. getting some work. So those are some garbage names for you. Drop candidates at running back that you guys submitted to us and want our opinions. Braylon Allen, who didn't do anything. If you don't have Brees Hall, are you willing to trade Braylon Allen in and go pick up a Tyrone Tracy, of course, for or Tracy, Algier yeah. or Madison? If you need a start and there's a better starter, yes. If you need a backup, a stash, no. I, I yeah. think he's a better – like Marshawn Lloyd, I think is a good pickup and stash option, but he's not as good as Braylon Allen. We've seen him be good. They both need an injury in front of them. Are you saying goodbye to Jerome Ford and Tajay Spears, who are week-to-week -week with hamstring injuries and Spears, the offenses are bad? Spears, yeah. Ford, I don't mean – Spears, yeah. yeah. Ford depends on yeah, who's yeah, out maybe. there. Yeah. If if you if you need someone and there's someone good, are yeah. you done with Zach Moss? I'm not done with him, but it is. It, I'm very much keeping a close eye. You you saw the first time where the the route participation and and the passing work kind of started going to Brown over Zach Moss this last week. So is that just a one off or is that the new trend? He's clearly the more explosive player over Zach Moss. Um, so you, you, we've got to keep our eyes on it for one more week. Let's take a break and we'll jump into wideouts. All right. 68% rostered, heavily rostered, 66% uh, rostered, two names, Josh Downs, Tyler Lockett. If they're out there, um, take a peek. Downs has been so good. He looks so good. He, he is their best wide receiver. I watched all of his routes this morning and – most of his stuff is really short near the line of scrimmage. His touchdown was great. They they schemed him wide open. Like I was watching, I was yeah, like, Anthony did. Anthony Richardson can absolutely hit him in a touchdown the same way. And Josh Downs gets a, a a lot of the the yak where you know he's got these screens or these little crossers. So he might be safer um, in a full PPR with Anthony Richardson than Pittman even. Targeted on thirty four percent of his routes, number four in football. And like I said, I I just think he is. He can shake a defender better than almost he's, anybody he's in very, football. He's very Zay Flowers. Like the, you know, yeah, he is. I, I think he's got the same ability. But heavily rostered. So let's look at some of the names. And this is, uh, to me, when I was going through our waiver wire rankings and sorting wide receivers, I wasn't super thrilled with the names um, because it just feels like the kind of names that you dart throw back and forth between and you have to hit on the right week. The, the biggest name, I think, that has long-standing value is going to be Juju and how much you invest on Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, he's he's the number one waiver pickup. The The fact that he was so involved in the last week, they do need him without Rushy Rice. This was the expectation when Rushy Rice went down was that, oh, Juju would get more involved. He didn't it, when the he week went. Of. The, the week of, he didn't get more involved. But last week, eight targets, seven receptions, 130 yards. He did have a 50-yard, like most – 
most of the the yardage came on that one play, but the targets are there. He's an important piece, so he would be the number one pickup for sure. Outside of Juju, we think Malik Neighbors will be back. When he's not playing, Darius Slayton gets double-digit targets every week. So that is a player that if you've got on your roster, you can hang on to to hear the Malik Neighbors news. They play Philly. Um, you know, Bub Means last week, 5 for 45 and a touchdown. Last man standing for New Orleans. They play Denver. Doesn't get me hot and bothered. Trey Tucker, Goost, uh, I'm done there with the <laughs> fact that, like, you just don't have a quarterback you can trust. Yep. What about Rashad Bateman? Rashad Bateman has been on the field. Rashad Bateman has been catching passes. He's a wide receiver, 18 and 35 the last two weeks. He's out there. So sometimes. Yeah, the it's it it's just a it week to week of who are the Ravens this particular week. Uh I mean it's always it's always Derrick Henry season, but it's just like how how successful are they going to be throwing the ball? It's because two weeks ago it was, you know, the this shootout with the Bengals where Lamar threw it forty two times. It was back down to he threw the ball twenty six times. He just was fantastic. Three hundred twenty three yards on twenty completions is uh that's that's called Washington's secondary. So Bateman is I think he's okay. I would should they be there again, the the roster is a little bit higher, but I would take the shot on uh, both Packers wide receivers, Dontavian Wicks is out. So I mean, it's the it's the same thing of why Wicks was so interesting when Watson was out. It's not it's not going to work every single week for all for all three of the the wide receivers for Green Bay, but ceiling is there for each and every one of them on every single week. So yeah. so Dobbs and Watson are higher up on my list. One hundred percent. I mean, they're they're still available in about half of leagues. So if they're there, I mean, I would I would love to have Christian Watson out there now that he's back and healthy. He's clearly not the one. Uh, Dobbs is the safer option, higher in the target pecking order. Doesn't usually have the same upside, but he has looked around the the end zone. Reed is the one for this team, but both those guys, if they're out there, I would throw Michael and Wilson. See, Houston and Jacksonville are the next two matchups. Yeah, those Packers. are those so are great. You're going to have to score. Yeah. Um, Michael Wilson. Yeah. 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 You you presume this week that Marvin Harrison Jones is going to be out. Ooh, who's that? Marvin Harrison Jones. <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> you said Jones, man. I sure did. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> Looked at us like we were crazy. First uh, first week uh, after the concussion, he will most most likely miss. Is that what you're thinking right now? With uh, them it, having the Monday Night Football game, I'm, I'm more optimistic. Yeah, I don't think the single him. day is going to make the difference personally. I mean, they, they've been a little bit more cautious and careful this year. Uh, I mean, you saw it with Malik Neighbors. Uh, we'll, we'll pay attention this week. Um, if he's back at practice and training the right way, sometimes people don't miss a week, but usually players miss the first week after a concussion in 2024. So I, I do right now think he's going to miss. You know who's going to be back out there for Arizona this week is um, – Zay Jones. Zay Jones. That was the Jones. Oh, were you just Marvin Harrison, oh, Zay Jones I Jr.? Yeah, I guess. Oh, maybe. Are you done with Keon Coleman and are you done with Roma Dunze? Are you willing to move on? Um, I no, I'd still like them on my if, roster. If there are the other guys we talked about, I I would I would pivot. Um, Calvin Ridley, Mike, are you are you? <laughs> we didn't get your reaction yesterday. Why are you laughing so much? Because it's painful. He he needed forty yards. And he's credited with eight targets. What do you mean he needed forty yards for for last week's? Oh, he was part of the. Yeah, he was part of the the par, parlay parte, and I think he had one hundred and forty five air yards. <laughs> Dude, Will Evans sucks. That guy is so bad. He yeah. is so bad. Isn't it also a Brian Callahan the, problem? I mean, I mean, how, how can maybe. you how can you bring in an offensive minded head coach? And who who trusted in this quarterback, and you can't scheme up a play. I mean, their their offensive line is getting boat raced every week, and you're you're trying to throw up these it, it, wild passes down the field. I mean, yes, like, could be, but um, no, that was that was it for me for for Calvin Ridley. Um, since we're talking about guys like Bob Means, I want to throw one more name in here, a player that two weeks ago. Almost had a 50-yard touchdown, should have. 
dropped it. This last week did have a touchdown. No, I'm. I was going to bring up their whole team. Is a rookie uh, who they traded up for, who has not played hardly at all this season. However, this last week went from averaging like you know in the teens of snaps, all the way up to sixty five percent of their snaps. He is united with his college quarterback. I'm talking about Devon Vele. No, <laughs> I'm talking about Troy Franklin, baby. The uh, give me that button, Mike. Give oh, me that. Yeah, oh, yeah it's Franklin. Hey, it's Franklin. I the the there was a quote from Sean Payton. No, Sean Payton known to be very level headed and always cool and collected. Uh, but after this loss, it was the I want to see all the young players. I want to like it was. I I told you guys we could we could not talk about Javante Williams. We had to whisper and we started talking too loud about how he had had two good games, and then he was back to regular Javante Williams. But uh, we didn't say his name in the in the running back portion because these are these are longer shots. But Audric Estime, Devon Vele, Troy Franklin for, for the Denver Broncos, if you're in a deeper league where you're like, there's never anyone on waivers, those three guys are going to be on your waiver wire, and there's not a ton of this, – this is calling your shot way early. Vele but, would be the one. But I, I yeah, I, I think Vele, Vele. The Vele was four for seventy eight, and they have a lot more confidence, or at least they've shown more confidence in his opportunities. He was he was just banged up. Yeah, so. he, he was week one had eight targets, and he had like he had beat out Troy Franklin in training camp, and he was going to be their guy, and then he got hurt. So now he appears to be back. Just saying, the the Denver Broncos offense might look super different in about two weeks. It's just wild. They're three and three. Yeah, and, the, and you know what I mean. And Sutton is still. Still, the wide receiver you'd rather play than those other for sure five S players. S Sutton is the clear one for this team, but they are looking towards the future, and you would hope that if Bo Nix is the future, which that's too early to tell if he is capable or not, should get better as the season goes along. So there, it's an interesting team to keep your eyes on, and he has not been that bad. He's not been great down Bo the Nicks. field, but Bo Nix has not been terrible. The tight end position. Ingram and Komet are rostered in 70-plus percent of leagues. They're your top pickups if they were out there, which I'm mentioning because Cole Komet is out there in our league of record. Mm -hmm. He's we on got, bye this week. Yeah. Well, that's that's all the more reason to be paying attention because we talk about drop it like it's hot tomorrow. Cole Komet, if you don't want to roster two tight ends, people are dropping him. And Cole Komet has a viable – like I'd rather flex him than Roma Dunze or Keenan Allen. Cole Komet is a very important piece of this offense – Two more touchdowns, goal line guy, and Caleb Williams is looking great. Pay attention to who's dropped from the Bears this week. Lower roster, tight end, dart throws. Zach Ertz, four for 68, 80% of snaps, five targets last week. Ertz is always a player you can put into your lineup and just hope you get the right week. Mm -hmm. And then Kate Otten scored. Kate Otten did not have a lot of yardage, but he did have six targets. So, you know. You can dart throw him. You can dart throw Fant. There, there's a lot of players in that category. Keep an eye on um, if David Njoku is out there in your league. Yeah. Um. He he got back out on the field. He had seven targets, and he's only sixty six percent rostered on. But I mean, sleeper, and I I think you, he's going to be pretty good. You have to, seven targets. You have to wait those though. So that's like. It's like two and a half. It's like targets. three, uh, three yeah, to three and a half. But did he catch five of them? No, that's impossible. Impossible. Deshaun Watson threw them. He caught five of them. What? Oh, that was during the second half where he, where Deshaun Watson looked like he remembered how to play football. I remember that. I think Deshaun Watson's having the worst six-game stretch in the history of National Football League. Sixteen. Yeah, it goes back, it goes back a ways. <laughs> well, I mean, if you just look at it from a historical independent. Start to the season. Oh, okay. There are metrics that put him like – there are some metrics where he's like 786 out of 786 starters. Yeah. And it, I just and want it, that to sit there. The film yeah. the film and the metrics, they they are so aligned. Yeah, sometimes the numbers can lie to you. Yeah, these ones Wait, are what did Yeah, what did Watson say? Or, I mean, sorry, Tom Stats are Tomlin? for losers. <laughs> yeah, Watson's – dude, he subscribes to that. Stats – Y'all came into this show today <laughs> with the Tomlin attitude is what you did. Yeah, we did. You came in here and hit like, <laughs> yeah. we're winners. That's right. Stats are for losers. Calvin Ridley for life. Look, eight targets. 
I that's the single most shared, talked about, and watched tweet in the history of my Twitter. For real? Yeah. That that the eight three targets? million people wow. have watched those eight targets. You well, made, there's a lot of people that needed to Ralph. Yeah, you made three million people barf. You, I hope you're happy about and, that. And look, some of you maybe you ingested a plant that wasn't actually edible. You were out there in the wilderness, and wrong you berries. needed to quickly get that out of your tummy. You're welcome. You can watch that video. Oh man. Um, can we talk about some defenses? Sure. Saints and Broncos on Thursday night, thirty-seven point over under. <laughs> That's give me the Broncos, even without well, Sutan. They're super rostered, so you'd have to go probably the Saints. Okay, I'll take either. All right. the, uh, but speaking of Deshaun Watson, the Cincinnati Bengals play uh, Deshaun Watson, and I literally don't care what defense plays against them; they are viable. Well, you get you're pretty much guaranteed of five sacks. That's why, and you're guaranteed under twenty points given up. That's why. So yeah, what's the worst defense in the NFL? Is it Carolina? Uh, yeah, Washington, Carolina, Washington, maybe Arizona. Yeah, maybe. all three. I would start against Cleveland. I would. Speaking because of of Carolina, they are playing against Washington. Would you start Washington? No, no, I, no, no. Carolina, okay. Carolina no, with Andy Dalton can move the ball. I, th I think that's going to be that's going to be a surprisingly fun game. Um, you've got the Patriots defense going over against Trevor Lawrence. Uh, across the pond, poor Trevor Lawrence this week. Four. Bonafide touchdown passes dropped. Four. And you go watch them and you're like, is this just a thing yeah, with him? Like it first. happened last year too. I know. You like, guys what nasty you kept voodoo. talking about how many almost he had last year and 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 now he gets the same and it wasn't just it wasn't just Gabe Davis. <laughs> like it was <laughs> Gabe Davis, but it was also like Christian Kirk dropped the touchdown. Brian pass Thomas, well. Jr. Brian had Thomas Jr. had an Thomas Jr. dropped one. one. We all dropped the passes from Goldilocks. So weird. The Vikings uh, coming off the bye, just yeah. it, not this week, but for the future weeks, you want – they're a very good defense, and so – And they could be dropped during this waiver cycle because and, they're playing against Detroit. And Detroit's defense is very good. I know they lost Aiden Hutchinson, that brutal injury. That was tough to, to watch. But they played Tennessee and Will Levis in two weeks, so if you're stashed – that would be one to look at. All right. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Amazon Business. Everyone could use more time. Thankfully, Amazon Business offers smart business buying solutions. So you can spend more time growing your business and less time doing the admin. I can see why they call it smart. Learn more at AmazonBusiness.com. Full stream ahead. Streaming quarterback options this week, which, uh, you know, you might need. I'm yep. starting to cast my eyes out across the landscape of quarterbacks and away from my Kyler Murray in oh, a couple man. of leagues because yeah. if Marvin's out on Monday Night Football, I don't know if I want to put my trust in Kyler and Michael Wilson. And Trey McBride can't do enough by himself. Yeah, he can do enough to be awesome for fantasy football, though. Yep, yep. Garbage time's great for the Cardinals. Uh, Kirk Delicious. Cousins is my start. Uh, my full stream ahead pick Seattle. They put up points. Atlanta has been putting up points. Cousins got snake bit by touchdowns on the ground to Bijan one uh, by Algier. Algier. I almost said ETN. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> score touchdowns, <laughs> um, but I'm going to go or Kirk, play for that team. Kirk Cousins. Uh, he was a drop candidate for people. Oh, that's dumb. Don't drop Travis Etienne. Tra that, 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 that's people that don't realize he got injured and in, like, obviously he did nothing in the game, but he's injured. Anyways, uh, my my start of the week, I want to read you some numbers here of matchups, okay? When you're looking at good matchups to play against, you want to look at schedule adjusted and look at the points above expectation, okay? One of the worst teams, the best teams to target, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they give three points more than the player that they face as average. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, because you can't run, run on them, they do 3.1. They're tied with the Colts. The Colts, 31st against quarterbacks. 3.1 points more than the player they are facing's average. And then you got the 32nd. 8.6 fantasy points above expectation. This is your worst defense, it's by the way. The worst yes. defense. Uh, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are facing Drake May. It's a scary start because 
the rookie didn't look great last he week. He looked okay. He did look okay. He threw three touchdowns, which was fine. I mean, he was a he was a top twelve quarterback last week, um, and that was against the Houston Texans, who have a defense. Now he goes across the pond. Second game, I think you can start him, especially because he's got the wheels. You know, this was a player who rushed last week for thirty eight yards. I think he could rush for fifty yards. He he should throw f touchdowns against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Their defense has been inept against quarterbacks. Based on that, though, there's a, there was a name omitted that I actually think is viable moving forward, and it's Demario Douglas at the wide receiver position. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I wish we would have brought his name up earlier. This matchup combined with just how quarterback-friendly he is, like Jalen Polk didn't get it done. Coach no. came out, criticized him. Demario Douglas is tried and true. So I think he's okay. actually a waiver pickup that should be added. Agreed. Yeah, and I'm going with Andy Dalton against Washington through four starts. He's averaging nearly 40 pass attempts per game, and the Manders are allowing the fifth highest yards per pass attempt. They Their secondary is atrocious. We will be attacking them. Uh, look, Washington allowed a top eight QB performance in four of six weeks. Deshaun Watson and Kyler, the only two to not do it. Dalton is in a great spot. All right, tomorrow we've got Hungry for More Thursday night preview. Mailbag questions to answer, and probably more Devontae Adams talk. We'll see. Thursday and Friday starts of the week, matchups in the Wheel of Shame. Jason mentioned it earlier. Go check out the Ultimate Dashboard. Go to jointhefoot.com. It's one of the many perks of being a supporter and member of the Foot Clan, along with tons of premium metrics, tools, resources, reports, um, the Discord channel, extra episodes of the show, and uh, you can load up all your rosters into the Ultimate Dashboard. And we are... We are working very hard to bring the Ultimate Dashboard to the mobile app. Uh, I think we're getting very close. Obviously, we want to release a working product. And uh, the Ultimate Dashboard is, you know, it's a it's a beast. So we want to it get it is. out there. And we've got uh, our team working very, very hard. It's, so it's awesome. Be there if, if you haven't checked it out yet, you you will love it. Also, can I throw these W's away? I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever <laughs> giving the Saints another win. Um, Thursday, oh. we'll find out. Denver, Spencer Rattler. Goodbye. I got a snake, man. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.